Welcome back to Alive and Well's Daily Dose, your daily dose of support. And today we're going to be talking about an important topic as we think about how to support our entire community in being alive and well. Now, we know that during this time, both in terms of our health as well as economically, that certain communities have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 across the country. And that includes also refugee and immigrant communities. And in order to make sure that that trend doesn't continue in our community, we're gonna be talking about how do we support refugee and immigrant communities. So joining us today in this important conversation, we have Rosie with us, from the International Institute. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Rosie. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I wanna share with all of our viewers that Rosie is the director of, excuse me, the director of social work for the International Institute and such a great resource here in our community. So we're so honored that, that you're taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us. Now, Rosie, as we think about what we need to know here. Can you give us some, some background to help us understand the bigger picture? Sure. So first and foremost, the International Institute's mission is to build a more connected and productive society to benefit immigrants, their families, and the wider community. So we've been doing this work for over 100 years now to this day when we're offering essential social, economic, and cultural integration services like case management, therapy, employment, English classes, citizenship prep, things of that nature. Um, and in this time in which we're all very much impacted by COVID-19, our, our work is now highly focused on that impact for immigrants and refugees. Mm -hmm. And so for that background, um, while many of us know that refugee resettlement numbers have dropped drastically over the past three to four years, if you've been following the news, we actually saw a slight uptick in the month of March in which nearly 50 individuals, newly arrived refugees came right at the exact same time that things really started moving in terms of response to COVID-19 in, in the St. Louis area. So for some of our clients, you know, who have experienced maybe war trauma or been under siege, had food supplies cut off due to conflict, things of that nature, it can really bring back these memories of times in the past and be a very emotional waiting time. And so we're very, very concerned not only about the economic impact that we're seeing on immigrant and refugee communities, but also that socio-emotional impact as well. You know, as we think about alive and well communities and, and its mission, we want to recognize that right now we're in a time of a, a great community and global trauma. And you highlight such an important point that for some, this time is very re-triggering and that it's not only the current trauma that they're experiencing, but it brings to the surface previous traumas that that they've experienced in their past as well. And so recognizing how this is a highly triggering time for, for some in our community, I think is, is crucial for us to all know as we think about how to support our refugee and immigrant communities. Absolutely, you know, and we think about being thrown into a time of uncertainty that is re-triggering of past times of uncertainty. And on top of that, throw into the mix these cultural and linguistic barriers that immigrants and refugees who are more newly arrived also face, including lack of familiarity with our systems, our benefit structures, healthcare, all of that is thrown into the mix as well. And so we, we do have these very new communities that are impacted, but it's also important to note that this is impacting our immigrant and refugee communities that have been here quite a bit longer as well. So everything from the uncertainty of our immigration system currently to separation from loved ones overseas um, and the same financial um, insecurity, food insecurity, access issues that we're seeing for our mainstream populations are of course impacting our immigrants and refugees disproportionately as well. 
So thank you for, for raising that crucial point. So as we think about supporting an alive and well community, what resources do we need to be available? What resources do we need to be aware of that are available to, to all individuals in our community, including our refugee and immigrant communities who, because of whether it be language barriers or, or cultural barriers, um, may not feel comfortable accessing resources at this time. We're working very hard to address that here at the International Institute. One of the things that we know contributes to um, this fear and uncertainty is lack of information in native language. So one of the things we've been doing is compiling information that's been translated into native language on COVID-19, how to keep yourself safe and healthy, what are some precautions to take, how we can support others, and all of that's on our website, um, www.iistl.org. And in addition to that, since the beginning, we have been putting out robocalls in native language to our population, reaching over 800 different numbers and with a 75% pickup rate where individuals are actually listening to these messages in languages like Kinyarwanda or Swahili. Um, some of these more less common languages that we are trying to really ensure that folks have information on not only how to keep themselves safe, but about the stay at home orders, what that means, what it doesn't mean, all to try and create some sense of comfort that at least information is getting out there. At least I have some knowledge in a way that I can understand so that I can help support my family and my community. No, wonderful. And I think it's so important to make sure that those resources are available in one's native language, especially we know that during a time of crisis, um, how you know we may be experiencing potentially retriggering from past trauma or we're in a state of hyper arousal or hypo arousal, having the comfort of, of being able to read and see information in, in your own language, there's a, a great comfort to that. And especially amidst this, this crisis. Now we know that from a public health perspective, you know, it's not just the, the crisis we're worried about in terms of in terms of catching the virus, but also thinking about now with the economy and how the economy impacts our, our health and well-being as well. Is the International Institute also providing resources in terms of what sorts of economic incentives might be available or how to access various resources to ensure our, our health and well-being are accessible during this time? Absolutely. We have a workforce solutions or employment division that is working very hard right now to support individuals, not only with unemployment benefit claims, but also finding jobs for the companies that are still hiring. And so that is a very important resource that I would encourage um, immigrant and refugee communities to get in contact with if you are looking for assistance related to um, finding a job or seeking unemployment support. We also have um, our small business loan or economic development department that is working very hard right now on assisting individuals um, in filing taxes, essentially, so that they can get access to the stimulus checks. We know that for individuals who um, arrived and maybe didn't file 2018 or 2019 um, taxes, that they're been impacted by um, not being able to access that stimulus money. So we are really working hard to support people on that front as well. Now, Rosie, we know we've heard reports nationally that unfortunately xenophobia is rising in our country. I, I wanted to ask, are we seeing a similar trend here in, in Missouri as it comes to xenophobia? Unfortunately, I think this is an occurrence that does happen in Missouri, does happen in St. Louis. 
And it's something that we're really hoping to draw attention to. You know, when we have this rhetoric that is very much anti-immigrant, and in addition, very focused on a specific population within immigrant communities, um, we recognize that that has an impact, again, not just on socio-emotional health, but economically as well. You know, seeing businesses that are owned by immigrants and refugees potentially having less customer base than their counterparts. And, you know, when we think about how we can support an alive and a well community in this environment, it really does become about showing up, right? In whichever way is possible to show up. You know, for some people that means going out and getting pickup from one of those immigrant refugee community, uh, restaurants, excuse me. For others, it's about challenging that rhetoric a little bit more directly when we hear it, whether it be via an online medium or in person. You know, these are the times that truly test and touch our humanity. And how we show up and how we do this work is a way for us to live our humanness. And I really believe that. So we all have a way to create an impact. And if we cultivate that kindness, instead of cultivating hate speech or unhealthy rhetoric, we are really doing our part to ensure a better trend. You know, you said something that was just so incredibly moving, that these are the times that test and touch our humanity. And, and I think that's just worth repeating because it's so crucial to, to hear and take the time to, to really absorb. And one of the things we want to recognize is that xenophobia hurts. As we talk about the perpetuation of trauma and how trauma can persist in times like this, we want to recognize how xenophobia is one of those ways that literally hurt bodies, hurt lives. It's not just a mere act of, of not going to a business or, or thinking bad thoughts, but xenophobia literally hurts lives. And if we're truly to build an alive and well community, we have to challenge that notion within ourselves, as well as disrupt that notion within our community to make sure that all are alive and well. So I think that's that's so crucial to, to understand as we think about the lived experience of refugees and immigrants in, in our community, that not just are they facing COVID-19 like the rest of us, but there are layers to their experiences that others may not have. And that xenophobia is definitely a layer that we have to consider and how that xenophobia hurts. Certainly. And I think that when we look at the refugee experience in and of itself, you know, the definition of a refugee is someone who is persecuted as a result of national origin or ethnic background. So we talk about that xenophobia here, but that is a very lived experience. Uh, and again, is re-triggering. Right? This all feels familiar, right? This, this talk about immigrants and refugees or my kind feels familiar. And that, again, as you talked about earlier, can be very triggering and re-traumatizing. So part of what we like to do on Daily Dose, because we're working to nurture an alive and well community, even amidst this very difficult time, what is it that you would like to share with our viewers? How can our viewers who may not know a refugee or immigrant personally, but who want to support an alive and well community, how is it that they can become engaged in, in helping our community as a whole to be safe, sound, and healthy during this time? That's a great question. We've already talked about first and foremost, cultivating kindness. A second way to help is really by becoming informed and understanding about the impacts that immigrants and refugees are facing on a local, state, and national level. But very directly, a way to support immigrants and refugees now is by considering what kind of in-kind donations you might be able to make in terms of 
face masks or hand sanitizer, things of that nature that we can distribute to both clients um, and staff to help everyone stay as healthy and supported as possible during this time. Also, given that there's been um, a very sharp economic impact on our immigrants and refugees, we could also consider making another type of donation, perhaps a cash donation that would assist uh, folks in getting some financial support as well. Now, I know that during this time, the International Institute seems to be busier than ever ensuring the wellness of immigrants and refugees in our community, recognizing that as we think about a limited resources, that there are even then fewer resources available to the immigrants and refugees who are, are in our community and who are an important and rich part of our community as well. So I know that the International Institute is, is offering services at this time. If we want to share information about the International Institute, how might we go about doing that, Rosie? I think our website is a great resource for information about our current services, as well as, um, as I mentioned before, information about um, COVID-19 and, and resources in St. Louis and Native language. I think that if you have an individual who is in need, I would strongly encourage you to call or have the individual call the International Institute directly. Um, we are still working very much so, albeit remotely for the majority of our staff. We have a small skeleton crew on site, but the building right now um, is not open to visitors. So we are working remotely, whether that be in our homes or in the community, really still trying as much as is possible in this time of virtual service and telehealth to still walk with our clients as they navigate these considerable barriers in the community. Thank you. And we will be posting both the, the telephone number as well as the website um, in the link below for our viewers to be able to access even after this episode airs but recognizing that those are valuable resources. And can you share with us, because I know on your website, as soon as you make it to the homepage, you can find resources available in a variety of languages. What languages might we be able to find on your website for resources for individuals who may be needing additional support during this time? We have a number of... Um resources available in several different languages. Our broadcast calls or our audio announcements, those are the calls that went out to clients directly or on our website, available in Arabic, Farsi, Pashto, Swahili, Kinyarwanda, um, Spanish, soon to be uh, Somali as well, soon to be Bosnian as well. So we are consistently updating the list and resources as time continues. That's such an amazing and invaluable resource that the International Institute provides. And, and I wanna say that's also just so amazing that we have such a rich diversity of languages spoken right here in our region. And it's kind of cool to think of, inter of St. Louis as this international mecca here, um, uh, this rich oasis of, of, of various cultures as well as languages, and in that wanting to make sure that those resources are available to all members of our community. So as we conclude our, our time together, Rosie, I just want to ask, is there anything else that you would like to, to share with our viewers that they might want to consider or that might be important for them to know about as we think in terms of supporting everyone in our community? I would add that supporting yourself is, is of critical importance, just as important as supporting others in the community. So as we talked about when we're showing up to do this work, this human work, do not forget to take care of um, yourself in, in addition. Um, we need to be able to do that so that we can keep giving. And so recognizing that this is hard on all of us um, is an important step, you know, even if it seems pretty, pretty obvious or something that we talk about a lot, 
Um, I think it bears repeating because our immigrants and refugees, as well as our entire community, need us um, to be our best selves, right? And that can be hard right now. And so whatever we need to do to support self-care and wellness for ourselves is truly helping the community as well. Rosie, I just want to say thank you so very much for sharing all of this incredibly important information with us. We know that unfortunately, during this, this time of COVID-19, that various communities have been disproportionately impacted and that Alive and Well communities, our, our goal and mission is to make sure that, that no community is disproportionately impacted, that we can only be alive and well together. And so that means together we have to build an alive and well community. So I just want to say from the, the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for, for joining us this morning, for sharing all this richness with our, our viewers. And, and thank you for the, the essential work that you're doing during this time. Thank you so much, Sean. So now for our viewers tuning in, either live or after the fact, your daily dose challenge is going to be to think about how you yourself can support the international community, specifically supporting the, the refugees and immigrants who make up a crucial and vital part of our community. So think about whether that's going to be making a donation of some sort, but recognizing not all of us have the ability to make a donation. So how is it that you can disrupt that cycle of trauma and how is it that you can counter xenophobia to make sure that all in our community are alive and well? And as usual, please make sure that you share this daily dose of support with someone who you think could use this, recognizing that we all could use a little bit of support during this time. So Rosie, uh, a special thank you to you. Um, and before we tune out for today, a few quick announcements that, that we want to share. Um, we want to share with our viewers who are tuning in. Um, first of all, Ramadan Mubarak, um, recognizing that some may start this time of observation um, already last night, or some may begin this weekend. And so recognizing during this time of reflection and community that for all of our viewers tuning in and for all those in our community celebrating, and observing Ramadan, that recognizing we know it's a difficult time and we wish you a Ramadan Mubarak. In addition to that, we also want to share that beginning tomorrow, we are going to also model self-care here at Alive and Well Communities. And so this weekend, you won't see new episodes of The Daily Dose. So what we encourage you to do is take an opportunity to either join us on YouTube or Facebook and look at one of our previous episodes of The Daily Dose. We've now got over 30 different episodes. And so we hope that you take an opportunity to tune in and watch one of those episodes that you may have missed or tune in and, and watch one of your favorite episodes to just give you that daily dose of support to help enhance your self-care and well-being overall. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us. Again, a special thank you to Rosie, who took time out of her busy schedule to be with us today. And we'll see you back here with another live episode on Monday. So thank you so much. Take care now. Bye, Rosie.